Google Gemini Live is finally here. This is Google's response to ChatGPT, where you can just speak fluently, flawlessly, just having a full conversation. And today I'm gonna to be showing you exactly how it works step by step, just as a beginner's guide. How does it compare to ChatGPT? Does it stand out on its own as just a way to have full conversations? Google's Gemini Live also allows you to use the camera in real time so that you can literally get feedback on what you're actually seeing, upload photos and more. So we're gonna see just how this stacks up. And as someone who's used ChatGPT in the past for the live talking function, I'm curious to see exactly how this is actually going to shake out. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So let's hop right into Gemini Live and see exactly how good this thing is. All we need to do to get started having a full conversation with Gemini Live is go to the bottom right hand corner here next to the microphone icon and hit the button. Hey Gemini, how's it going? Hey there, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. What can I do for you today? Hey, uh, I just want to have a quick chat to tell people exactly what Gemini Live actually offers, how it differs from just chatting with Gemini over text, and how it compares to some of the other live, hands-free chat models. Sure thing. Gemini Live is all about having a natural, back-and-forth conversation, just like you and I are doing right now. You don't have to type anything out, and Gemini responds in real time. It's great for brainstorming new ideas, getting help with planning, or even just exploring new topics. Plus, you can interrupt or change the subject whenever you want, and Gemini will keep up. How does that sound so far? That sounds pretty good. Is there anything specific about Gemini that stands out as being better than some other hands-free AI models? Well, Gemini Live is designed to be super responsive and keep up with your train of thought. It's really good at understanding what you mean, even if you don't say things perfectly. Plus, it's great at handling interruptions and changes in topic. Have you tried using any other voice AIs before? Yeah, I've tried using the ChatGPT one, but how does it really compare to this? Gemini Live is designed for super smooth, natural conversations. It's really good at understanding what you mean even if you don't say things perfectly, and it handles interruptions and changes in topic like a champ. Plus, Gemini is built with Google Search Smarts, so it can find answers and info really quickly. Have you noticed any big differences yourself? Yeah, I would definitely say so. Because Google Gemini not only just brings in all of the hands-free you know, mobility of being able to just have a conversation without actually typing everything out, but because it's also hooked up to Google, it's backend searching throughout the conversation is happening live. It doesn't need to pause and wait and do all the research. It's just doing that in the background. And in addition to this, I can actually use the video feature to show Gemini exactly what I'm doing. It can actually see me and interpret what it's seeing in real time and then search things up on the web. So we're gonna do a little bit of an example for that. So Gemini, here's what we're gonna do. Sounds good, I'm ready to go. What's the plan? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn on my camera and I'm gonna show you a series of objects. Now, these objects don't all have brands on them. They may be you know, inanimate objects, they may be related to tech. It could be really anything. And your goal is to just describe to me what you're seeing, just so that people can understand that you know, with very little processing time, you can actually see what I'm seeing and just interpret it. Okay, I'm ready to see what you've got. Let's do this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you just a few objects. So as we can see here, you know, you're looking at the first object right now and just tell me what it is. Okay, I see a black keyboard. Is that right? That's right. What's next? That's right, that was the easiest one. Okay, now I need you to tell me what you're seeing. Okay, I see a black wireless mouse. What else have you got for me? That's not quite correct. This isn't a mouse. Do you have any other ideas? Okay, my bad. It looks like a black box with the letters DJI on the front. Is that right? That's right. Could you infer exactly what that black box might be? Okay, got it. That's the DJI wireless microphone charging case. Pretty cool. What's next? Okay, there we go. Now what we'll notice here is that it actually got the item wrong on the first try. It thought it was a mouse, but given enough time to look at it, see the letters and do its research in the background, it eventually came to the right answer. So it wasn't right at first, but given enough information, it was able to figure out exactly what it was. Okay, I see what you mean. It took a few seconds, but it got there. Do you have anything else to show me? Yeah, I'm gonna show you something else and you just simply tell me what this is. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see it. Take a look. Okay, I see a black and white case with a carabiner. Is that a case for wireless earbuds? It is. Would you be able to identify which kind of wireless earbuds they may be? Okay, it looks like a case for Apple AirPods Pro. Is that right? That's right. How are you able to figure that out just from looking at this? Well, the shape of the case, the carabiner, and the white color are pretty distinctive. Plus, you mentioned they were wireless earbuds, 
and AirPods Pro are super popular. Was I right? You were correct. Now, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We can see here that your image recognition skills are top notch, but how well are you able to do with things like doodles, drawings, or handwritten notes? Okay, I'm up for the challenge. Let's see those doodles and notes. Okay, here, I'm just gonna place a notebook in front of you, and we're just gonna do some simple writing. Okay, I'm ready to read your writing. What does it say? Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is actually do some handwritten math problems. I don't think you're gonna have any difficulty actually solving the problems, but what I'm gonna do is get worse and worse with my handwriting for each problem. And we're gonna see how smart you are and how good your vision is to actually be able to identify the numbers as they get slowly worse and worse. Does that make sense? Got it. I'm ready for your math problems. Let's see how bad your handwriting really is. Okay, so first of all, we're just gonna start with some simple, I'm just gonna start writing numbers out and these should be pretty easy to identify. Okay, I see the numbers two, one, zero, one, zero, one, three, and nine. What do you want me to do with them? What is the answer to this math problem? Okay, I see the math problem. The answer is 210 quadrillion, 101 trillion, 394 billion, 590 million. Cool. So we can see right away that Gemini has virtually no issues with actually being able to see these handwritten notes. Now I'm going to make my handwriting much more scribbly on purpose. So let's say that I'm, uh, you know, somebody who doesn't have the best handwriting and I'm like quickly jotting down notes and I just go, yeah, I just need, um, yep. Times. Okay. I'm ready for the next one. Okay. I see 21,010,139,459 by 10. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit messier now. Okay, I see 21,010,139,459 by 10 million. The answer is 2 quintillion 101 quadrillion 13 trillion 945 billion 900 million. Is that right? Yes. I'm now going to circle something and I want you to tell me what these two numbers are. Okay, I see the numbers 3 and 4 circled. Is that right? No. What is the first number? My bad, the first number is a 6. Is that correct? No, that's not quite right. Okay, I see now. The first number is a 1. It seems not even Gemini Live is immune to messy handwriting. But for the most part, this conversation showed that it could see exactly what I was doing in real time. It was able to look at what I was writing and then pull all the information. Let's say for example, that I was working on some math homework or I was working on a history assignment that had some details. Well, as I was writing out things, Gemini could literally look at what I was writing and then provide information. Let's say for example, I was writing some report and I needed some background statistics to you know, prove my point or pull in some other resources. Gemini Life can literally be the AI that sits on my shoulder as I'm writing something out and just be able to make those proper assurances to whatever I'm writing. It doesn't have to just be pulled from the internet. It could just be from Gemini knowing it. But from that, we can see exactly what Gemini's capabilities actually are. We're going to do this again exactly with the same sort of idea where it's using its vision capabilities. But this time, we're going to give it a little bit of a curveball and see how Gemini Live actually handles it. Hey, Gemini, how's it going? I'm doing great. Just wrapping up this awesome chat about Gemini Live's features. What's on your mind today? I need help designing a logo, and I was hoping you could help me as I'm drawing it out. Of course. I'd love to help you design your logo. What kind of logo are you thinking of? I need to make a logo for a cat coffee shop, and I just want to scribble some things out. Can you give me some ideas? A cat coffee shop? That's adorable. You could start with a simple outline of a cat's head, maybe with pointy ears, and then add some coffee elements. Perhaps the cat is peeking out of a steaming mug, or its tail is shaped like a coffee bean? Maybe. Those sound pretty good. I'm not the best at drawing, though. Could you walk me through step-by-step step on how to actually draw that logo? Sure. First, lightly sketch a circle for the cat's head. Then, add two triangles on top for the ears. Inside the circle, draw two almond shapes for the eyes, a small triangle for the nose, and a curved line for the mouth. Next, add a small curvy mug whoa, shape whoa, whoa, below whoa, the cat's whoa, whoa, whoa. head. Slow down, you're going way too fast for me here. I've got the circle with some pointy triangles on top. What comes next? Okay, inside that circle, draw two small almond shapes for the eyes. Then, add a tiny triangle for the nose, right between the eyes. Finally, add a little curve below the nose for the mouth. Are you ready for the next step? How do I draw the mouth again? Okay, just draw a little curve below the triangle nose for the mouth. 
Is it looking good so far? What kind of curve? I mean, I don't even know how to draw this. Right now, I just have a weird looking cat circle triangle thing. Can you explain to me and provide some examples of real life logos where this sort of thing is used? No worries, I can help with that. For the mouth, try a gentle upward curve, like a smile. You could also add a couple of short lines for whiskers on each side. Does that make sense? Sure, okay. I'm just gonna simply do a drawing here and I want you to actually take this image that I'm about to send and create an image out of it. Okay, I see the cat's head with the mug and steam. Do you want to add any text or other details? Uh, nope, that's pretty good. Can we just take this logo and actually make a logo out of it? Okay, I've got your cat coffee logo with the cat in the mug. What kind of vibe are you going for? I can help you pick out fonts and colors to make it look really professional. Yeah, let's try and do something simple, kind of like Starbucks, but not overly complex. Okay, I can help with that. Since you like the simplicity of the Starbucks logo, maybe we can use a similar circular design for your cat and mug. We could put the cat's face inside the mug and have its tail curl around the circle. For the text, cat coffee, a clean modern font would look great. What do you think? I think it sounds great. Can we actually go ahead and create that now? Okay, I've created a simple circular logo for your cat coffee shop, similar to what you'd see at Starbucks. It's got a clean modern font, and the cat's face looks adorable inside the mug. What do you think? Okay, so for reference, this was the logo that I sketched, you know, just on my live conversation with Gemini. And now if I say create the logo, let's see how it actually turns out. Okay, so we have the image of the cat as it described it based on our conversation here. Now I can say create the logo, and now I can take a picture here of this cat coffee thing that I just drafted up during my conversation with Gemini. And I'll just say create the logo and I'll submit that. And we'll see exactly what Gemini does. And there we go, there's our logo. Gemini Live has changed the game completely. It used to be when we would talk about AI models that we would say, hey, the better the prompt you put in, the better the output you're gonna get. But now with Gemini Live and the fluid conversation that we just had, we've seen that no, you don't have to have better prompts. You just need to have real conversations. And Gemini Live actually allows you to have a real conversation. It felt like I was talking to a person there, except that person had access to all of the knowledge on the internet and could look up things in real time. This image of a battery pack, for instance, if you didn't know what DJI was, I mean, how would you know exactly what it is? But Gemini Live was able to identify it in just a couple seconds just by searching up DJI and the you know, I guess characteristics, I mean, I don't know how it does it, but it was able to figure out that this is a mic pack just from a black box with three letters on it. And that is pretty cool. So I'm excited to see what happens next. Try out Gemini Live for yourself, see how it compares and see what kind of conversations you can have with it. As far as I'm concerned, Gemini Live is the top performing hands-free AI model for fluid conversations where it can pull all of the relevant information up and it doesn't necessarily feel like it's just spitting data out at you. It hasn't just searched something up and just fed it to you, but actually tells it to you in a way that somebody who just just happens to know about it does. So that's pretty cool. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Josh Mountain, and I look forward to seeing what kind of conversations you'll have with Gemini Live. See you in the next one.